My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are almost finished doing all the math problems from this book. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain the exact same problems in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are a very important part of the exam. They are still a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient problems to practice on. For that reason, from day number 401, we began the project of solving all the quantitative comparison questions from this book here, the 10th edition of the General GRE. Right now, we are on page number 341. Please turn to it. Page number 341, the very first problem that we see there on the page, problem number 1. Let's see what it has to say. Problem number 1 being one, it's very simple, very straightforward. Problem number one, on page number 341, when it appeared in the exam, 81% of people had no trouble with it. Here is column number, column A, and here is column B. You're being asked to compare 6% of 9 versus 8% of 7. Now, as I always told you before, as I said, we begin this process we begin this uh, project on day number 401 and from day number 401 I've been reminding you every single day that no matter how simple the problem may be, no matter how, how, how easy it may be, no matter how straightforward it may be, I insist that you pause the video each and every time, do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? I'm going to stop for now five minutes, talk, I'm going to stop talking for five, five, five seconds rather. I want you to pause the video, solve the problem, and then unpause it, and then compare your work against the work we'll do together. Here we go. There's the 6%, 6% of 9 versus 8% of 7. Here's the problem. Problem number 1, page number 341. So here's what we're being told. 6%, 6% means over 100. Of means times, or times 9. 8% means over 100. Of means times 7. Multiply both columns by 100. If we multiply both columns by 100, the 100 drops out. And what we are left with is 6 times 9 versus 8 times 7. Let's divide both columns by 2. If we divide both columns by 2, the 6 will become 3 and 8 will become 4. So essentially what we're being asked here to, is to what, what we're being asked here to compare is 3 times 9, which is 27, versus 4. 4 times 7, which is 28, and of course the answer is B. Number 2. Question number 2. Question number 2 is a geometry problem. Again, a very straightforward problem because it's number 2. So straightforward, in fact, that when it was given in the real exam, 85% of people had no trouble with it. Only 15% missed it. Here's, here's a picture that is given to us. We are told that this is angle A, angle B, B degrees, C degrees, D degrees, E degrees, and F degrees. What we are being asked to compare is A plus C plus E versus B plus D, B plus D plus F. Again, pause the video, do it yourself. Do you understand? Give you five seconds. Okay, here we go. 
A plus C plus E is what we have in the first column. Whereas here's our A, here's our C. Let me do it in a different color here so we can actually see the line. We're dealing, what we're dealing with here is a straight line here. Here we have A, here we have C. And what we have to understand is that that uh, that uh, E that they're talking about here, that E that they're talking about is equal to B because they are vertical angles. E and B are vertical angles. E equals B because they are what are known as vertical angles or opposite angles. And opposite angles are equal. B equals E. So therefore A plus C plus E is essentially A plus B plus C. A, A plus C plus B because E equals B. And that's a straight line and therefore this is 180. Similarly, when we're talking about B plus D, now we're talking about B and D. Let's do it here, right here. Here is This is the straight line here. This is the straight line we're dealing with. Here is our B and here is our D. B plus D plus C here. C is same as F. C equals F because they are again vertical angles. C equals F because they are vertical angles. Perhaps we're making too much fuss about it. And therefore B plus D plus F is same as B plus D plus C. B plus D plus B plus D plus C plus C, which we know, which we know is 180 also. This is 180 because it's a straight line. The red line there, this is 180 because that's a straight line. Therefore the answer is C. Some of, some of the three angles in column A equals to the sum of the three angles in column E because both of the sums equal 180. Because they, both of them, both of these uh, scenarios form a straight line. Number three. Question number three. Question number three. As soon as I finish putting it on the blackboard, pause the video immediately and do it yourself. And do it without a calculator. Do you understand? 81% of the people had no trouble with it. The question is how much is how how does 2 raised to 3 times 17 times 5 squared over 60 compare to 255 255 over 2. Here is a column A, here is a column B. Like I said, leave the calculator alone. Do it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, and then you then then I want you to compare your work against the work that you will do together. That you and I will do together. Okay? I'm going to get out of your thing here. I'm still here. Two cubed times seventeen times five squared over sixty versus two fifty five over two. All right, here we go. Now listen, I'm not going to show, I'm not going to show all the baby steps because if I start showing all the baby steps, it's going to get very annoying. So we're just going to get going, okay? So here we go. This is five squared. Five squared can be written as five times five. We see five on the top. We see sixty on the top. Bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by five. If we divide top and bottom by five, sixty is going to become twelve. What we're left with here is, uh, what can we do next? Let's multiply both sides by 2 so that we can get rid of this 2 here. So we are, we, are, we are comparing 255. On this side we are left with 255. And this, on this side we are left with 2 times 2 cubed times 17 times 5 over 12. Let's divide top and bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 2 so that 12 becomes 6. Now as you can see there is not much we can do there. Oh there is a, there is a, there is a 2 cubed which is 8 and this is 6. Let's do one more time this becomes 3. And this 2 cube is going to become 4. So now we are left with 4 times 17 times 5 over 3 versus 255. Now when you get to a situation like this where there is not much going on here, always remember these questions are called quantitative comparison. They expect you to compare the quantities, not compute everything. If you, if you have this uncontrollable urge to reach for the calculator and start computing everything, you are missing the point. This 255 that we see there, 
Let's first see if this, it has something to do with 17 or not. I don't know. Let's first let's find out, shall we? Let's let's find out what happens when you divide 255 by 17. It may work. It may not work. At least give it a shot. So here we go. 255 divided by 17. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to divide 255 by 17 by hand. So let's do it. How many how many 17 in a 2? 2 has no 17. 2 has no 17. That 2 is going to go and join the 5 and becomes 25. How many, how many 17 does 25 have? 25 has 117. 25 has 117. Once you take away 17 from the 25, you are left with 8. That remaining 8 is going to go and join the 5 and becomes 85. It becomes 85. Question is, how many, how many 17 do you suppose there are in 85? Do you suppose it might be 417? It cannot be 417. Why not 417? Because had it been 417, had it been 417, had it been 417, the unit digit would have been 8. The unit digit here is 5. It cannot be 317. 317 will end in a 1. It cannot be 617 because 6 7s are, 6 7s are 42, which will end in a 2. The fact that it ends in a 5, let's try multiplying 17 by 5. See what happens. Because we know, we know that the unit digit has to end in a 5. Let's find out, shall we? Multiply it by 5. 7 5s are 35, carry 3, 7 1 5 is a 1 and plus 3 is 8. There you go. Which means 85, 85 has 5 17s. Remember this 5 is not a 5. This 5 is an 85 because the 8 came from here and joined the 5 and became 85. 85 we just found out has 5 17s. So 17 goes away and this becomes 5. In other words, 255 divided by 17 is 15. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide, we're going to divide both columns by 17. When we divide both columns by 17, this 17 disappears and this 255 becomes 15. It becomes 15. Well, I see a 15 here, we see a 5 here, why not, why not divide both columns by 5? Let's divide both columns by 5, this 5 disappears and 15 is going to become 3, because 3 5 is a 15. We see a 3 here at the bottom here, let's get rid of this 3 from the bottom. We get rid of the 3 from the bottom by multiplying this column by 3 and this column by 3. When we multiply this column by 3, the 3 disappears here, and we are, what we are left with here, what we are left with here is 4, that's all we are left with, 4 versus, versus 3 times 3, which is 9. The answer is B. The answer is B. But the point is, but the point is, in the real exam, you have to be able to do this thing within few seconds. Do you understand? And that comes from practice. That's all it is. There is there is no other there is no other solution to it. There is no other there is no other way. Do you understand? Let's do one more, shall we? Well, let's do an extra one, a bonus one, which is uh, a problem that is not in the book. I'm going to set it up on the on the top, and you you do it yourself. So here is the new problem. This is a bonus problem. Here's here's how it looks like. How about 3 cubed, 3 cubed times 15 times 7 over 60 versus 50. I'm going to give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video and you do it yourself. One more time, 3 cubed times 15 times 7 over 60 versus 50. Alright, here we go. Very first thing I want to do is, very first thing that I like to do is to get rid of this anything that appears in the bottom. I hate dealing with fractions. Let's multiply both columns by 60 so we can get rid of this bloody thing, okay? Multiply this side by 60 and multiply this column by 60 and now the 60 goes away. So what we're comparing with is 3 cubed times 15 times 7 versus 50 times 60. That's what we have. Column A, column B. I see a 15 here, we see a 60 here. Why not divide both columns by 15? When we divide both columns by 15, this 15 disappears and the 60 is going to become 4. 60 is going to become 4. What else can we do here? I guess that's the end of the story. Oh, what do you know? This is this is this is strange. This is the end of the story. Three is three raised to three is twenty-seven. Twenty-seven times seven. Twenty-seven times seven versus fifty times four. Fifty times four we know is two hundred. 
and 27 times 7. Let's see how do we figure out 27 times 7. This is how we figure out 27 times 7. Do you know how much 25 times 7 is? This is something you should know by, uh, by, by a little bit of uh, thinking. You should have some intuitive understanding as to how to, how to manipulate numbers. I don't know what 27 times 3 is. How the hell do I know? But I do know what 25 times 7 is. How do I know 25 times 7? Because 25 times 8 is 200. Of course, if I have 8 quarters, that's 2 dollars. 25 times 8 is 200. Therefore, 20, 25 times 7, if I had 7 quarters, that's $1.75. So 25 times 7, 25 times 7, I know is 175 plus the 2 times 7 because we have 27. We are breaking up 27 into 25 and a 2. And 25 plus 7 is 14. 175 plus 14 is going to be less than 200. This can be less than 200 because 175 plus 25 is 200. The answer turns out to be B. Answer to this question turns out to be B. That's all we had for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.